Hello friends, good to see you again. It's been a long time since I saw you. How are you doing? Please let me know, right, how you are doing. Hope that you are fine. And you know, I pray for people. So when you write, I will pray for you to the Most High God, to Elion, to Yahweh, to Yeshua, Jesus. He is the God over everything. He created thing by his word. He said, be light and light came. And Jesus is the word of God. So think with yourself, if you have learned that Jesus is created, think with yourself. He is the word of God. He is the Kalimatullah. Is the word of God created? Was there a time when God was without word? Was there ever a time where God did not have words? Was there something lacking in God sometime? No. So the word of God has never been created. The word of God is part of God. And that's what Christianity teaches. That the one God that exists in heaven, out of him came the word and the word became flesh and he dwelt among us and we saw the glory of God through him. And uh, he is part of, just like, you know, I, I will not try to really explain the Trinity in a few minutes. Uh, but if you imagine a lamp, the lamp has light, it has shine, it has warmth, thinking of a candlelight, okay, so the God is the light and the warmth can be Jesus, the light that shines out can be the Holy Spirit, it is all one light, it's one candlelight, but it has dimensions, you know, and uh, that's how we understand. Just like we are created in his image. As human beings, we are created. We are a spirit. And we have a soul. And we live in a body. So we are three in one. Uh, and that's because we are created in image and likeness of God. He is three in one. It, I am one. I'm just one. But I have different parts of me, um, spirit, soul, and body, and you too, and God also, because we are in his image. So we are not saying that there are three gods. We are not saying that the word of God was created, that Jesus was created being. He was God in the beginning. He, were, he is God. And he came down to the earth, out of heaven, down into the earth, lived a perfect life, died in our place so that we will not have to die for our sins and carry our sins ourselves. And anyone who believes that, anyone who trusts that, will have their sins transferred to Jesus and Jesus' life, heavenly life, transferred to us. That's called the great exchange. And that's... It's a spiritual reality and God is spirit. So we need to think with spiritual eyes. We need to see with spiritual eyes, think with spiritual thoughts, because it's not just about being human being. Life is more than we can touch. Life is, and God is greater than our mind and our brain. We cannot fit, if we can fit, if you can fit your God and understand everything about him in your mind, mm, I think you've made God in your image, but it's opposite. You are made in God's image. He's greater than your brain, your mind, your logic. Um, yeah, and he can be two places at once. He can uh, live on the earth, speak through to Moses, Mosa in the burning bush, and still be on the throne in heaven. He can die on the cross and still be on the throne in heaven because he is God. And just like I am three in one, I am body, soul, thoughts, feelings, decisions, and um, um, and spirit, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, God is also three in one. Okay.
So today I wanted to speak about what is so precious for me with the Christian faith. And I just said goodbye to a, a friend who had to leave uh, Norway and uh, uh, he had to leave for another country. Um, he was not uh, accepted, he didn't get a visa to stay in Norway and kind of feared, okay, what will I do now? Where will I go now? I don't have visa. I don't have my passport. I'm asylum seeker. What will happen to me? And then it is so good to be able to say, wherever you go in the world, you have family. Because when you are in the family of God, you are family with believers all around the world. And in any country, there are churches, even in Iraq, even in Saudi Arabia, in, in Turkmenistan, in Afghanistan. Actually, the places the church grows quickest these days is number one, Iran, number two, Afghanistan. <laughs> so there are churches and church is just a fellowship, can be few or many people, can be open meetings or more secret in places where uh, where people are persecuted and killed for having a Bible or killed for being praying to Jesus. You know, they must be more uh, cautious. But you can find uh, congregations, fellowships, churches in every nation. And God calls this the holy nation. Um, the good news of the kingdom is the general phrase that God, Jesus that God uses to speak about the message of the Christian faith. He calls it the good news of the kingdom. So the good news, the evangelion, that's what in Arabic is called the Injil, the evangelion, <laughs> I think it comes from. So the Injil comes from evangelion in Greek, which means good news. Uh, so the Injil is good news. And if you haven't read the Injil, please find it. Please find the Injil online and read it. It consists of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John and Acts and some more letters. And then the last book, which is called Revelation. Uh, uh, Revelations, I don't remember. Revelation. Uh, it is Jesus, after he went to heaven, who reveals things that are to come. And there you can see things that are happening in the world these days. And you can hear words from Jesus on what he hates, what he loves, how he wants us to live, and the good hope of how paradise will come to earth, how we will be with him, how he will be with us and wipe away the tears of our eyes. This is not a far away uh, God. He promises that we will once again, at the end of time, we will once again walk with him as we walked in the Garden of Eden. You remember the beginning of our story in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day and then they chose to follow their own desires, their own logic. They chose to follow the voice of the greatest deceiver. If you are following the voice of the greatest schemer, deceiver, you know that you are being deceived. So please do not do that, but follow the words of Yahweh, of Yeshua, the creator God who created heaven and earth. He is the one who holds the universe in his hands and he will one day end story and he will be with his people again because that's, uh, that's his desire as expressed throughout all his story. History is his story, right? History is his story. Uh, the beauty of the Christian faith is that, okay, in other religions, you have to climb up to God. But if you miss one thing, if you do one sin, it's not like you can do 51% good and 49 because paradise heaven is not consist of half bad and half good. No, 
if God will let us come into paradise being half good and half bad, paradise would be half good and half bad. Don't you understand that? Please understand that. So he will only let perfection come into paradise because paradise is perfect. If not, it's not paradise, you know. And God is holy. He cannot be close to unholiness, to egoism, to pride, to unkindness. He cannot. If we were to approach God with a bit of unkindness in our heart or pride, saying that, hmm, I'm pretty good. God, sh you should let me into your heaven. That's pride. Be aware. Be aware. If God, we would approach God in that way, we would burn. We would melt like wax in his presence because he's holy. So we need to get all of that out of us. Everything from hell, everything of unkindness, everything of egoism, thinking about ourselves, everything of pride, of unbelief, everything of that, we need to get it out of us. And Jesus says, give it to me. And then because of that, he was crucified on the cross because he was seen by God as having so much unkindness in him. He was the kindest, you know. Because it was our sin that he carried on the cross. And it was not the nails that held him to the cross. It was his love for you, for me. And that's why we love him so much back. That's why we want to be with him. That's why we also want to be kind to others. We want to be like him. We want to represent him well. Because he so loved us when we did not deserve it. you know, And that's the beauty of the Christian faith. Not that we try to climb up to God. But that we say, God, I give up. I cannot make it. I cannot become 100% pure. And then God climbs down to us. And God forgives because of the blood. His perfect blood on the cross. In the old times <clears throat> in Egypt, when God's people were slaves in Egypt for 400 years, the pharaohs treated them harshly and they cried out to God. And God sent Musa, Moses, the deliverer, to free them out and say, let my people go. You remember the story? And there were 10 plagues. Uh, the Nile was made to blood uh, the river and all the swarms of grasshoppers came, etc., etc. And there was darkness, etc. The last plague was that God said, still, do you not want to let my people go? Okay, the firstborn of every family will die tonight. And the angel of the Lord, angel of destruction, will go through the land. But you can be spared if you take a perfect lamb and you take the blood of the lamb on the beams of the door. So if your door is red by the blood of the lamb, the angel will pass over you and you will live. And that is the perfect... Um, symbol of what Jesus did on the cross. So for us now, if we have the blood of the perfect Hamel Allah, the Lamb of God, on our doorposts, on our heart, the angel of destruction will pass over us and he will, we will live. And Jesus says that the one who believes in me shall live even though he dies. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me that I am God, that I am Yahweh, and that I paid for your salvation, that my blood protects you and saves you and cleanses you, makes you perfect. If you believe that, then you will live forever. So I repeat, Jesus said, he didn't say I'm a prophet. 
He said, I am sending you prophets. That's what Jesus said from his own mouth. And then he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He didn't say, I know I can show you the way. He said, I am. That's the name of God, Yahweh. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even though he dies. And that's your life insurance right there, my dear. That's um, and how do you get it? It's by believing. You say, okay, I see it now. I believe that Jesus is God coming to the earth to show God to us. Because God in heaven is invisible and he made himself visible. Uh, and then we can read about it in the Injil, in the Bible. If you believe that and you confess with your mouth and say, Jesus, you are God. And if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, and um, then you will be saved. And actually, uh, in Acts, in the book of Acts, it also says that in the last days, when God will pour out his spirit on all flesh, where there will be wars and rumors of wars, and the moon will turn to blood, and, and times and seasons, everything will change, and there will be terrible times, earthquakes and pests, uh, pestilences and you know pandemics then everyone who calls on the name of Yahweh or Yeshua Jesus shall be saved and saved means rescued out of darkness into light delivered from danger into God's safety it means being forgiven of all your sins because Jesus bore them on the cross so you Get his life, his perfection. So when God sees you, he sees you as perfect. You know, blessed, happy, guided, and always advancing straight ahead is the one whose sins the Lord will never count against him. So you can know that on the last day, God will see you through the filter of Jesus. He will see you as perfect because you have said, yes, I believe Jesus died for me and I will live for him. And it's not a boring life. Uh, he has infused us with his spirit and his life, the resurrection life. We are now immortal. We will live forever and we have nothing to fear. We have nothing to fear. And we are infused with his love. He says, it is not enough that you just love those who love you. Everyone does that. The Gentiles do that. But you shall love your enemies. You shall pray for those who persecute you and you shall do good to those who hurt you. That is the revol revolutionary love of Jesus. Uh, to love those who hate us. That's the only thing that can change this world. We know that. We feel that. I'm sure that you know and feel it. And wherever you are in the world, you can find a church of Jesus followers and that's your family now. Because ev when Jesus came to the earth, most people did not recognize God. But those who did recognize God and those who do recognize him now as God, they are, they get the authority, the right to be called children of God. And God takes care of his children. He calls himself a good, good father. Not an earthly father, like the perfect dream father that you would only dream about. And he takes care of us. He says he will carry us in his arm. And he says that my sheep hear my voice. I know them, they follow me, and I love them, and I give them eternal life. And no one and nothing will be able to snatch them out of my hand. And that's a promise. So let me pray for you wherever you are. And... Um, Go and find uh, Jesus followers, a church where you can have family so that you are not alone, so that you are encouraged. And thank you for watching my videos. And may you be encouraged by this and may you pass them on to people so that they also can hear. And uh, they are also on YouTube. See no salt bones on YouTube. See no salt bones. Yeah. May God bless you. Father, I thank you for these beautiful people who are watching. Please let them find you and watch over them, protect them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.